Hey guys, it's uh, January 12th, um, and looking at the video, it looks like things are very weird as far as the color goes. That's because I'm inside my tent and it's daylight. Usually I do these videos at night. Um, I'm actually tucked in my sleeping bag because um, there's a bit of an ice storm going on outside. Um, anyways, the last time I did a video was January 3rd. Um, and I keep promising to do them more often, but I keep kind of, yeah, they don't always seem to come so often. But I, in, in my defense, it's been a, a pretty busy week or so. Um, anyways, last time I did a video, I was um, camped behind Stomp and Tom Connors, um, which was kind of neat. Anyways, so moving forward from that day when I woke up the next day, I actually slept in because I like to do that. Um, I ended up only pedaling like 20 kilometers that day. Um, I got waved into uh, uh, Craig Costain, I think it's how you pronounce it. I'm really bad with pronunciations, but Craig Costain in St. Lawrence. He actually saw my CBC article um, in uh, on PEI, and he recognized me on the road and passed me and then went up his driveway and then jumped out of his truck and waved me down his driveway. And, of course, I... Uh, I, I went down his driveway and anyways met with him he wanted to give me a hot chocolate and um, his partner uh, Carla Kelly was there and then all of a sudden all sorts of other people started coming out of the woodwork and long story short I ended up spending the night there and that was amazing and awesome and I'm so glad that he waved me in um, anyways the next morning I left um, his place to continue the West Cape and the West Point and it was a pretty cold day. Uh, the wind was pretty uh, intense. Um, but I didn't have a long day, only about 45 kilometers till I got my cousin, got to my cousins, uh, David and Heather Vortman. Um, they ended up putting me up for two days, which was really cool, really awesome. It was uh, really neat to, uh, it's, to just to hang with their family. It's been uh, many, many years. Um, I apologize. I know my eyes look like I just woke up because in a way I just sort of did wake up, but that's all part of the adventure. Um, but anyways, um, uh, yeah, it was really cool to, to meet their family and whatnot, just hang with their family. Uh, their kids were just amazingly well behaved, uh, kind of put me to shame, uh, for sure. Um, I did learn how to milk a cow for the first time. Uh, they have a small hobby farm. They had a, uh, a cow, two horses, well, a horse and a pony. They had some goats. They had uh, chickens and ducks and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was really kind of cool. Um, anyways, uh, was there for two days. Um, yeah, because the next day was, yeah, it was the weather was pretty miserable. Um, but anyways, uh, the next day I actually ended up breaking my biking record so far because um, they were in Glenwood and I made my way all the way to Summerside, but I took kind of the scenic route through much of the coast um, and ended up pedaling 100 kilometers uh, that day to get to Summerside. Um, and also during that day, I did get a message from Sirius XM to do an interview, uh, so I wanted to make sure I was in um, uh, Summerside for that. Um, anyways... Uh, in Summerside, I um, well, I got there that the, the, that first night quite late, um, but I ended up staying in that uh, abandoned building behind the diner uh, in, in Summerside where I spent New Year's Eve because um, I knew that was waiting for me, uh, something that was a little bit out of the elements because they were also calling for um, uh, a pretty good winter storm the following day. So anyways, it was a good thing that I pushed my way to uh, Summerside because that uh, snowstorm came um, and whatnot. So spent the day in the diner just working away on blogs and photos and this and that. Um, I did the radio interview, which was my very first radio interview in my life. It actually went pretty good. Um, I also did a podcast um, uh, later that day. Um, and I'm crush. Hold on. Crisis to crushing it. Um, so I'm not sure when that comes out, but that was uh, that was my first first podcast. Uh, so that went pretty cool too. Um, 
anyways, so yeah, spent two nights in that uh, that shed. And then the next day, I didn't have a lot of mileage to do. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did sleep in. Bad habit, sleep. Oh, well, in, in my defense, um, a lot of times I go to bed uh, if, you know, like I think the one night I left Tim Hortons, it was after 1 o'clock. Um, so sometimes I go to bed pretty late if I have a place to work on my computer um, kind of deal. But anyways, yeah, slept in that day grabbed some lunch at the diner, and then made my way to the bridge, um, which started a whole other uh, interesting, um, uh, an interesting number of adventures from there, because um, I'll backtrack for a few moments. Um, when I was on my way to Summerside in the dark, um, I got this message from uh, Kelly Richard, and she has been following my ride since I got on to PEI, and she actually saw me uh, on the side of the road, and so she uh, messaged me shortly just to make sure I was okay, and then she also forwarded me that photo um, of me that someone had taken uh, pedaling through the, uh, the snowstorm on New Year's Eve. Um, so that was amazing. Um, and anyways, she, she asked if it was possible if I, if, if, if on my way through to the bridge, if I could stop by the information center, which she runs, uh, to, to meet. And so of course that's possible. Um, so I made it to the bridge. It was actually a very cold day. The wind was just blowing like crazy. Um, I had actually taken some photos of the bridge from, you know, from the shoreline, you know, from far away. And, uh, but so by the time I did get the information center, I was absolutely frozen. And so it was an excellent excuse to warm up, but it got to meet Kelly and her coworker, Elizabeth Jorgensen. Yep. And, uh, so that was, that was really cool. And then what happened was, is, um, I said, well, I'm going to go to the lighthouse. I'm going to take a few photos and then I'm going to go to Tim Horton's and warm up a little bit just to kind of figure out what my plan was because um, because I'd gotten such a late start it was like now 3 30 and it gets dark at 4 30 and you know not a lot of options on the other side of the bridge so I was going to go to Tim Hortons just to figure out what I was going to do so anyways went to the lighthouse took some photos the winds were relentless um, I actually spoke to the following day, I spoke to the guy that shuttled me across the bridge, and he said that the winds were pretty consistent at about 87 miles an hour, but they were uh, over 100 at different times. Um, so anyways, back to the original story. So yeah, I took some photos, was completely frozen by the time I got to Tim Hortons, uh, parked my bike, uh, got myself organized, grabbed my coffee, and not two minutes later, Kelly walks into Tim Hortons and she's like, I just closed up the shop and I, stu- I stepped outside and that wind was so brutal that I had to see if you were going to be at the Tim Hortons and if you were going to be there, I was going to track you down. And so she offered me a place to sleep, which was completely awesome and amazing. So I ended up um, <clears throat> pedaling my bike back to the information center so it could stay there for the night and Kelly brought me home and made me uh, supper and a warm bed to sleep in and so I ended up staying a whole extra night in Prince Edward Island that was completely um, unplanned Uh, so that was actually kind of amazing and kind of interesting and uh, definitely added to the adventure so anyways yeah so I spent the night there and then the next morning uh, she brought me back to the information center when she went into work and I caught the shuttle um, into New Brunswick. Uh, I followed the Cape. Um, I'm not going to even pretend to pronounce the Cape, uh, but anyways, I followed the Cape um, uh, round um, by the bridge and whatnot, and then it brought me back out onto 16, and then I made my way to Olak, um, the truck stop, the big stop. Um, that night, yeah, not yeah, because it was yeah. I got there a little bit, got there here. Well, I'm still here at the truck stop. We've had some kind of miserable weather, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I got to the truck stop, and I can't. Okay, today's Saturday, Sunday. So did I get there Friday night? Yeah. So I guess I got to the truck stop Friday night. Um, anyway, Saturday they were calling for rain, which uh, 
you know, is not a good time of the year to be pedaling in. So I took a day yesterday at the truck stop here, which turned out to be a very good uh, decision uh, just because it did get very, very windy. I actually posted a photo uh, last night. I thought, you know what, I haven't looked at my tent in like all day. I should just go out and have a look at it, make sure everything's good because I saw the, the Canadian flag just blowing like crazy, you know, throughout the day. And sure enough, yesterday evening when I... Um, uh, when I uh, um, went out to check my tent, uh, sure enough, my tent was blown completely on its side. Um, but I also had some pretty cool experiences um, uh, yesterday. Um, the driver that actually brought me out here to do my bike ride, um, he actually happened to be coming back through um, on his way to Bathurst. So I did post a photo, but Sandy Carr, he's the, the driver that uh, brought me out here. And um, uh, yeah, he happened to come through at like one o'clock, um, which was really cool to, uh, to connect with him. You don't see too many um, familiar faces when you're, when you're on a bike trip uh, so far away from home. Um, and then I actually had a super, super, super cool experience that was really just, it was kind of humbling. Um, I do have a, a, I'll call him a super fan, Dale Spence. Uh, he is uh, following my ride very, very closely, messages me most every day. Um, anyways, his parents, I, I, so hold on, sorry, I'm kind of monkeying this, this, this story up. So I basically spent the better part of yesterday um, and the night before uh, in the trucker, truck, trucker's lounge uh, just working on my laptop. And yesterday afternoon, doesn't this couple come around the corner um, and, and it's Dale's parents. And, um, and, you know, I'm sorry, I apologize, Dale. Your father's name is escaping me. I know your mom's name is Doris and your father's name. And I know I'm going to remember it as soon as I hit stop record. But anyways, they had been looking for me um, they spent actually quite a bit of time yesterday looking for me because they knew I was in the in, in the area, but they didn't really know where I was. And anyways, they tracked me down in the driver's lounge um, at the truck stop, which just kind of floored me that they spent that time like looking for me. And so we actually had a really nice conversation. And um, yeah, it was actually really amazing. So um, anyways, so yeah, so... You know, just mostly worked on the laptop yesterday. Actually, admittedly, I did actually start watching some TV yesterday evening. I missed my TV, and the TV was, like, right there in front of me the whole day, but I had uh, successfully ignored it just about the whole day. But um, anyways, got in my tent fairly late last night and um, woke up to rain pellets. My tent is, I'll have to post a photo shortly, um, my tent is pretty much covered in... Uh, like ice and snow or whatever, but uh, it's been kind of ice pellets, so it's probably pretty dangerous to be on the road. Um, and I do actually have a place waiting for me in Amherst, which is only like 10 kilometers away, so um, probably what I need to do, it's like lunchtime, and I'm still in my sleeping bag. Um, I should probably kind of exit the tent and uh, consider what my options were, but I realized it had been so long, well, it's, yeah, it's been over a week again since I'd done a live video so but anyways it's been pretty busy and uh you know usually i post you know the highlights uh of the day or, or throughout the week whatever so it's pretty easy for people to kind of uh see what's going on as far as the ride goes but uh um the one thing i will say just in regards to outside of what you know what i've been doing is that uh it seems like the, since that last uh snowstorm in summerside i would have to say that the, the there's been a shift in the the season like it's <clears throat> I've been pretty lucky I've been pretty blessed so far as far as the weather is concerned but um, I'm gonna say in the last uh, half week um, temperatures have definitely dropped uh, considerably um, uh, what used to be you know an average <clears throat> excuse me cold day of minus five is definitely um, turning into minus 15 Celsius wind chill uh, throughout the day. Um, yeah, even pedaling to the truck stop, I was, I had a headwind, sorry, I had a headwind the entire uh, 67 kilometers. So, um, 
yeah, I kind of feel like there's been a slight shift in that things are, the, the challenge level just went up um, on the ride uh, between weather and wind and whatnot. Um, so it'll be interesting uh, just dealing with that. Um, but uh, anyways, I guess that's kind of about it. Uh, like I said, it's been a really busy, uh, a busy week uh, between um, the amount of people I've met and just the, the random interactions. So it's been awesome. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, uh, we'll, see how, we'll see what happens in the next couple of days. Oh, and I guess I, well, I did post a photo of my, uh, my route that I'm working towards as far as uh, heading to Amherst and then along the coast of um, uh, the Bay of Fundy, Nova Scotia, and making my way to Windsor, Nova Scotia, and then down to Halifax. I'm not sure what my plans are for Halifax. I'm sure I'm going to be there more than a few days. And then the coastline to Digby, and then take the ferry across to Digby. Um, so I think that's probably a good 800 kilometers or whatever more just here in Nova Scotia. So... Anyways, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm working towards so far. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, uh, try to get back on these videos more regularly, again, as I keep saying. All right. Oh, Kelly just sent a message. <laughs> nice to see you. You're doing well. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly, and, and thanks so much for putting me up for that night uh, so unexpectedly. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, all right. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.